Dudley, 1978. Headline news at school was a close encounter of the sexual kind. Our woodwork teacher, Dave Trebleco, was officially doing it with Miss Titley. Our Gordon refused to have anything to do with the gossip and was busy turning the school rag into a top literary review. I didn't realise there were so many budding Sebastian events at this school. My newspaper won't have sold out that quickly. Fruity New Yorkers, get him here. I think you've got the Midas touchdown. It's been buzzing in here since you took over. I'd love a yoghurt, Darren. That's the uh, special offer on the new yoghurt tops, Mr. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 if it isn't Dudley's answer to Rod Stewart and Britt Eklund. More like Rod Hull and Aim, you. Neville, you're as bad as the kids. You'll make an honest man of him yet, Geraldine. Oh. Honest? Ha! All clear now. Old is optic. New in, we got big and bouncy. And Siggy's a three and a half P for singles. So, what do you want? I'll have a strawberry one, thanks, Tracy. Why is it always stuff off the top shelf? She was turning out to be a real hard case. Nice legs, shame about the boat legs. Not in public, Geraldine. Oh, don't be so silly. When am I going to see you again anyway? I can't wait. I'm a bit busy at the moment. Uh, I've got football practice and uh, drinking practice. Why don't you want to practice with me? You need to cool it, Precious, with the talk of the school as it is. I mean, we're all over the boys' toilets, complete with diagrams. Well, Dave, in the words of Oscar Wilde, the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. Nice legs, shame about your face. Mine are best than that, and bigger. Settle down. Morning, everyone. I hope that's not cigarette smoke I can smell. Winford, will you unclip Ralph's nose chain from there? It'll rip. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Gordon is a moron. Gordon is a moron. Let love is not fair. How come we got two Gordon prison wardens today, miss? Gordon is observing while I teach, and he is not a moron. But it says so in the song, miss. Wayne, I think you'll find that in the song it's John that's been jilted because he's not as good looking and as trendy as Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet. And listen to Miss Titley. Yes, thank you, Gordon. <clears throat> I mean, Mr Grimley. I can handle this. Now, today we're on Sons and Lovers by D.H. Lawrence. Can anyone describe for me the relationship that Paul has with his mother? Uh, Miss Titley, the protagonist has an unusually close relationship with his mother, even more so than with his lovers. <laughs> Very good, Mr Grimley. Now, how does this close motherly bond affect his other relationships? His lovers can't compete, Miss. Very good, Mr Grimley. <clears throat> Now, this relationship provoked a lot of interpretations. Can anyone think of any? Miss, there are Freudian and Oedipal readings, Miss. Which mean any what? They're based on infant sex, Miss. Will you shut up, Gordon? Yes, Miss. Sorry, Miss. Darren Grimley. Is that a tabloid newspaper? I'm confiscating this filthy rag. What is it now, Mr Grimley? These papers should be censored. They're lewd and full of nudity and salaciousness. Surely censorship of the press is the greater pornography. And anyway, the naked form is nothing to be ashamed of. Apart from Wayne's. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean Gordon's wrong, miss? Does that mean he's a moron? Gordon is a moron! young people, much like yourself. Oh, and by the way, I've warned Wayne not to bring his hunting knife in. Thank you, miss. I do think this punk craze is a threat to the very fabric of our society. Oh, to be young again and start afresh. Student life was so vibrant with debating societies and discos every night. I do like disco dancing. 
I expect you'll be out all the time. Tripping the light fantastic with Dave Treblecock. Actually, no, Gordon. I don't know if Dave likes disco dancing or not. He's always so busy with his football or something. Really? Mm. In that case, miss, uh, <laughs> Geraldine. <laughs> Gordon? Jam need the toilet. No, miss. I was wondering, would you like to go dancing with me? I can get us into the student disco in Dudley for 10p with me NUS card. <gasps> well, I haven't got anything else special planned. Why not, eh? What the hell are you playing at? Nothing, Gordon. I'm just selling baps. Oh, I can see that. I'm horrified. You're just jealous. I bet you've never even seen a woman's boobs before, have you? Of course I have. What? What about that time when Nan was in the bath and got her hair jammed down the plug hole? Oh, Gordon, you're making me feel sick. Oh. All right, Darren. I'm clean out of smokes. Can you sub us a couple of number six? Um, Mr. Trebleco, you know we don't sell cigarettes. Cigarettes as well as lewd pictures. I'm surprised at you, Mr. Treblecoe, for encouraging this illicit trade. Mr. Grimley, this looks like interesting reading material. Wouldn't have thought it was your bag, though, on second thoughts. What? Oh, no, this isn't mine. Of course not. Listen, why don't I have a word with Grimley Jr. here, put him straight, and we'll say no more about your literary tastes. No. I've got to treat Darren like any other pupil. And this is a matter for the headmaster. I've got my job to do, too. What have I told you about getting caught? Darren, now! I think you'd better explain yourself. The tuck shop wasn't making any money. You said I could run it how I wanted. I was just supplying a limited commodity. Boobs to excessive demand, fourth-year boys. It's classic Keynesian theory. Well, luckily, Keynes has spared you the cane on this occasion. Thanks, sir. Not so fast. I've decided on your punishment, Darren. One that'll put your entrepreneurial skills to good use. I want you to take over the school paper. That isn't necessary, surely, Mr. Alder. No way. And I expect it to be run with the same vigour and zeal as your little contraband operation. But it's my literary platform. But you were only caretaking it, Mr. Grimley. It is the pupil's paper. But the tuck shop needs a new member of staff to look after it. So I'll put that in your capable hands, Mr. Grimley. Me? Can I just get the cane instead? No! I fought for law and the law one. I fought for law and the law one. I can't think of any stories to write for that stupid school paper. And I wouldn't have to if you hadn't shocked me. Well, I'll be making a few changes in that tuck shop. All that junk food will have to go for a start. It's terribly bad for you. You know, it won't be long before Geraldine and I are properly together. What about her and Dave Treblecoe? Gordon, you've no chance against him. You're not even a proper teacher yet. You live at home, share a room with me, and you're skinned. And you're still school spanner and all. You shouldn't listen to idle gossip, Darren. They're not as together as you think. In fact, Geraldine and I are going out dancing. I'm going to be the envy of the student population of Dudley. Well done. I'll dance and romance her off her feet. I'll show that dodgy Dave Treble co-op for the scheming fraud he really is. And then, Geraldine will be mine. If you say so, Gordon. Nighty-nighty. Oh, pajama, pajama. Gordon, it's another day in paradise for you and Miss Titler. I'm dead stuck for a story. I know, I just make something up like real newspapers do. 
What about for my front page? Ozzy Osbourne bites head off school hamster. No, no, Darren. It should be more like a literary review. You don't want to bore everyone to death. Poets Corner, creative writing, and something sciencey for the children with no imagination. You need lots of gossip, footy, and pictures of tarts. It don't have to be true or nothing. That's right. Me punters are teenagers. It's got to go down market. Mum, can we have sandwiches today, please? I ain't done the shop, love. There's no bread. Oh, well, Mum, school dinners taste of puke. I'm sorry, love. I know school dinners ain't up to much. In fact, that meat's like rubber. It's supposed to be the real thing, but I'm sure it's just that cheap substitute stuff. It's no wonder you feel at home there. Just like a piece of fake old meat you are. At least I've still got a pulse, you disgusting slob. All you do is rot in that chair all day while I go out to work to bring the money in. Scab. The grimly curse. I'll give you a hand with the paper, Darren, if you're desperate. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I've, uh, I've had some food for thought. This rubbish. Nouvelle cuisine. It's better for you. And it won't rot your teeth. I want a pig in wagon wheel. Try an apple. They're free with a school paper. You are what you eat, remember? Are you calling me a fruit? Who ya? Well. Thanks a lot, Darren. Selling your own mother down the river. I could lose my job over this. There. Yeah. Double semolina. Oh, did you get... <sighs> Janet, what's up? The meat. It's all my fault. But you didn't supply it. I'm going to put our Darren onto the scent of the story. Don't worry yourself, Janet. I've been onto the suppliers and they've come clean. I thought it smelt like burning rubber in here. So my job's safe? Of course it is. Now I know it's not your cooking. You should be proud of your Darren. He's turning into a groundbreaking journalist. Good work, lads. We'll be quids in if we can bang 50 of these out by the weekend. Cheap reproduction art, it's what the market's crying out for. What? The fruit market? <laughs> Shut up, Gromit. Keep on painting. Sir, why can't we paint something good like naked women instead of doing fruit all the time? Trust your mind to be on another kind of reproduction. We're doing fruit because that's what I do best. We're nearly out of frame wood again. This is all that's left of the trophy cabinet. Well, it's about time it was put to some good use. We've used all the wall bars and loads of chair legs already. There's no flies on you, Grimley. But your Uncle Dave is one step ahead of the game. Even as we speak, I'm sorting out enough wood to keep us in picture frames for a month. Hey, hey! Voila! Pop it down over there, lads. The situation is under control. Gotcha. Miss Titley, what brings you here? Love is in the air. Okay, lads, yeah, enough. Shall, right, you lot, get lost. Go to the next class. Well, Dave, I didn't know you were an artist too. What a wonderful copy. It's a Cezanne, isn't it? Yeah. I went to art school in 68. Bit of a blur, actually. Oh, I'd love to see some of your paintings. Have you got any on display anywhere? Oh, no. Mine aren't impressive enough to exhibit. Oh, what a pity. I thought you'd be hung somewhere. Mind you, still life of fruit is a bit boring, isn't it? What else can you do? I'm open to suggestions. Just think of the greats. Rembrandt had his Saskia, Dagor his ballet dancers, Whistler even had his mother. I'll be your model. I could model for you. Oh, how romantic to be immortalised in oil. Geraldine, that is the best offer I've had all week. <laughs> and let's keep it our little secret. There 
you are. Ice cream. There's a special treat that got you some ice magic. Never gazard properly like that stuff on the telly. Yours never gazard full stop. You limp from the waist down. Limp. Have you got a big scoop for tomorrow then, Darren? Bog off, Gordon. I'm sick of that boring paper. Anyway, I really upset Mum last time. Serves it right. Go for the jugular. It's a good job. I've got a story for you then. Oh, good. What is it? A lot of timber's been going missing from the school in the last few weeks. Benches, desk lids, most of the gym, and even bits from Mr. Holder's office. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do, Darren. I've discussed this with Mr. Holder, and he agreed that as a journalist, you should try to expose the worm responsible for this. It shouldn't be too hard to put someone in the frame. You realise I've had to spend all our profits on fixing this lot up, don't you? You set me and the lads back at least 20 notes. It's not my fault, I had to write something. The establishment made me do it. Thought we was your mate? You're not true to your punk root. You're a capitalist pig. Mr. Treblecoat, what a slick operation. You and the lads should go into business. No problem, Mr. Alder. Glad to help. We'll soon have the chairs and the trophy cabinet restored to their former glory as well. It's a strange business, this. It's a shame Darren's article couldn't identify the vandals responsible. Um, yeah. Still, I'm sure it's frightened them off. I dare say. Best be vigilant in future. Sir, I want to resign. I've run out of ideas and everyone hates me. I, I feel like Malcolm McLaren. You're doing a sterling job, Darren. Yeah, but, sir... Look what you've achieved. Real meat in the canteen, the gym being repaired. Remember the school motto, valiant for the truth. start our special art sessions later. Not in front of everyone. Well, no, I'm no exhibitionist. I was hoping it would just be the two of us. I mean, look, tonight's fine. Seven o'clock then. And don't go confusing life with art later, will you? Can't you just tell me if I look pretty or not? You look great. A real peach. I can't wait to see it. Couldn't I just have a little peek? No, it's a surprise. And keep still. I need to finish touching you up. Oh, Dave. This must be how Botticelli's Venus must have felt. Yeah, quite probably. What would you say was my best feature? I'll let you know when I've found it. Dave! Geraldine, you are all beautiful. Come on. Let's take a break for a while. Don't be moody now. Geraldine. I don't know where I put up with all your abuse. It's only a cover for how I really feel. Really? And how's that then? <laughs> <laughs> What's your latest scoop then, Darren? Give them all to me. This is libelous. This is top splash. Any journalist worth the salt would have printed that story. And it's going for more than 15p. That's double the price. What are you doing, Gordon? I'm confiscating these papers. Oh, you're such a philistine. The students are allowed their own paper. It's for them, so give them back. You can't just censor things because you don't like them. Look! Oh, my goodness. Right, Milato. We're going straight to the headmaster's office. Now! Darren! Apologies!
apologise for your behaviour and these pornographic lies. Don't worry. Don't worry. This is a blatant and inexcusable invasion of privacy. Actually, Mr Holder, it's my fault. I must stand by what I've taught him and defend Darren's right to publish. A free press is the fourth estate, the final check on democracy. Miss Titley, Darren is in the wrong and should be severely punished. Well, actually, it's Although not... Although potentially all... career damaging, Darren has been encouraged to find stories. Yeah, valiant for the truth and all that. Look, the lad doesn't need any more encouragement, thank you. And I don't know where he discovered this in the first place. Calm it, everyone, and just listen. This has gone far enough. Have any of you even looked at the picture? Dave, I don't believe it. Believe what? What's wrong? You've made me look completely pear-shaped! Geraldine? I'm a sack chip, please. Geraldine, I'm so sorry Darren printed that story about you. Oh, it's all right, Gordon. It's tomorrow's fish and chip paper. But it's not very pleasant being the centre of all that gossip. Well, I don't think Dave Treblegoes painting captured your essence at all. It was a terrible lightness. Thanks, Gordon. Let's go in, eh? felt like everyone he knew had seen Miss Titley with no clothes on, he was determined that next time it'd be in. Here we go, two people! Oh, she's a slow